Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. In this video, we're going to talk about asthma. So here I am drawing a human and his respiratory tract. Asthma is defined as a chronic inflammation disorder of airways. Asthma can be divided as either atopic or non-atopic. Atopic asthma is is extrinsic asthma, meaning it is triggered by envir by the environment, and 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 this type of asthma is the most common. Atopic asthma involves inflammation mediated by systemic IgE production. Non-atopic asthma, on the other hand, is an intrinsic asthma, and this is far less common. Non-atomic asthma, therefore, refers to inflammation and constriction of the airways that is not caused by exposure to an allergen. The inflammation is mediated by local IgE production. So now let us look at a cross-section of a normal lung, the bronchioles of a normal lung. So here we have the mucus layer and uh, we have pseudostratified endo endothelial cells, we have the lamina propria, and we have the smooth muscles surrounding all this. So that was normal. And if we were, we were to look at an, an asthmatic bronchiole, the lumen here, the inside is much narrower. But before we focus on the asthmatic bronchiole and stuff like that, let us look at a normal histo the normal histological layers of a of a bronchiole. So here we have the mucus, and on this layer we have the pseudostratified columna epithelial cells. Below this we have the basement membrane. Within the epithelial layer, we also can find goblet cells, which are responsible for secreting mucus into the lumen. Below the columnar cells, we have the lamina propria, which contain many cells, including ma macrophages and mast cells. Mast cells are responsible for secreting histamine. Below the lamina propria, or surrounding the lamina propria, we have the smooth muscles. Now, if we were to compare the normal bronchial layer here to an asthmatic bronchial layer, we can see many differences. Firstly, we can see that there is an increase in mucus production. So there is an increase as well in goblet cells. Also with this, there is an increase in eosinophils in the mucus and tissue. Here we have the pseudified, pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells, and below it, the basement membrane thickens. Lamina propria. Within the lamina propria, we see an increase in mast cell numbers, and so we get an increase in histamine release. We also have an increase in other cell types, including neutrophils during, in, during, and during inflammation, as well as T helper cells. We also can find that there's smooth muscle cell hypertrophy. So smooth muscle cells increase in size. And this is due to the constriction. Now, because of all these changes, there are three characteristics of asthma, the triad. These are airflow obstruction, bronchial hyperresponsiveness because of histamine release, and inflammation due to the increase in neutrophils and other immune cells to the area. Symptoms of asthma include shortness of breath, therefore, wheeze, chest tightness, and dry, irritating cough. So now that we have identified some changes that, that occurs during um, in, an, in an asthmatic bronchiole, um, let us look at the pathophysiology. So let's look at some players in the first in the pathophysiology of asthma. So we have a main one, IgE antibodies. Now IgE antibodies are important because they can bind to receptors on mast cells, forming a mast cell IgE complex. 
the mast cell Ig complex will recognize allergens and essentially begin releasing heaps of histamine. Other important players in the pathophysiology of asthma include eosinophils, dendritic cells, as well as T helper cells. Now, there are two types of T helper cells, main overall types. There's T helper 1 and there's T helper 2. Now, T helper 1 is normally found in the lungs. So, in normal lungs, T helper 1 are normally found. However, there is an imbalance in, in asthma because in asthma, T helper 2 cells, which are not normally found in the lungs, are upregulated in in asthma. So we have more T helper 2 cells in, in the lungs of asthmatics. T helper 1, you see, normally promotes inflammation by increasing cell mediated immunity. However, T helper 2 cells promotes inflammation by increasing the humoral immu Im immunity, so promoting antibody production. So I hope you can see how this correlates. Anyway, let's look at, let's, let's put all these cells together and try to create a diagram looking at the pathogenesis of asthma. And we're specifically focusing on atopic asthma. So here we have the columna, pseudostratified columna epithelial cells with goblet cells which secrete mucus on top. And here we have the lumen. Below the columna uh, the pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells, we have the lamina propria, where we have mast cells and dendritic cells, macrophages. And, okay, so in asthma, okay, let's just say an asthmatic inhales an allergen, and this allergen will trigger uh, a reaction. So a few things can happen. One thing is that the allergen will be, will be engulfed by dendritic cells, and activate the dendritic cells. Also, the columna epithelial cells will recognize this and secrete a substance called thymic stromal lymphocytes. Thymic stromal lymphocytes will condition activated dendritic cells to produce chemokines to attract specifically T helper 2 cells. The activated dendritic cell itself will activate the T helper cells to differentiate into T helper 2 and also will secrete chemokines to attract the T helper 2 to the area, to the bronchioles or the lungs. So the activated T helper 2 cells do, does several things. Firstly, the T helper 2's role is to promote the humoral immunity. So it will stimulate plasma cells through interleukin-13 and interleukin-4. And this will promote IgE production by the plasma cells. IgE will obviously uh, help, will bind onto mast cells to create the IgE mast cell complex. T, he T helper 2 itself through interleukin-9 will stimulate or promote mast cell, uh, mast cell activity. Another important function T helper 2 cells do is that it will base stimulate eosinophil production from the bone marrows uh, through interleukin-5. So interleukin-5, will, it will stimulate eosinophil production, so you get more eosinophils. And with more eosinophils, there's a, chemo, there's a chemotactic, basically, uh, uh, thing occurring, which will attract the eosinophils to the area, to the lungs. And so we have increase in eosinophil uh, amounts in the lungs. So the inhaled allergen um, will, will bind onto IgE mast cell complex, and this will cause the mast cell to release a few things, mainly histamine, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. All this specifically histamine will, will, will stimulate smooth muscles in the airways to cause constriction, so we get bronchoconstriction. Also, during this whole process, the, and the endothelial cell will, um, will release stem cell factors that will essentially uh, maintain the mast cells um, to the area. And so you can imagine that if there is this IgE being produced, this essentially this memory being produced, 
whenever uh, the same type of allergen is inhaled, it will trigger this whole process of histamine release um, and bronchoconstriction and you get you know more acinophil. So you get this whole process still occurring and occurring. So I hope you enjoyed this video on asthma and the pathophysiology of asthma. Hopefully it made sense. Thank you.